This is Lecture 6 in the FOA series on premises cabling. This lecture is on UTP cable termination. UTP cables can be terminated in plugs and jacks, where the plugs are used to make patch cords and the jacks are used in patch panels or on equipment. They can also be interconnected using punch-down blocks. In the lower left is a 66 block, typically used for telco connections, things like POTS lines. And on the right, lower, is a 110 block, typically used for data. All UTP connections use insulation displacement contacts. Insulation displacement contacts cut the insulation cut into the copper wire in the center of the wire and make contact. It creates an airtight seal around the contact. You use a punch down tool to terminate on punch down blocks or on most patch panels or special crimping tools for plugs. The connectors used for plugs and jacks are 8-pin modular connectors. These are commonly called RJ45s, but that's not the proper name. The RJ45 is a particular type of termination color code called USOC that's not used in structured cabling systems. Individual jacks are used for wall outlets or small patch panels and are terminated individually. Rows of jacks are used in patch panels for rack mounting in large telecom closets. The back sides of these have 110 connecting blocks and are connected with a punch down tool. There are two different wiring schemes, actually merely differences in the color code, used for termination of jacks. One is called T568A, that's this one, and the other is called T568B. The way they differ is by the reversal of pairs 2, orange, and 3, green. T568B seems to be more common, but the important thing is to not mix the two or you will end up with wiring errors. This is the view looking into the jack. This is the T568B scheme. And as you can see, pair 2 and pair 3 are reversed. Pair 2 on pins 1 and 2 now and pair 3 on pins 3 and 6. If you make the mistake of putting a T568A termination on one end and a T568B on the other end, you'll end, with a wire, end up with a wire map error of transposed or crossed pairs. This is a common mistake made in terminating UTP cables. Typical jacks use 110 punch downs for termination. They tend to be marked with color codes for both T568A and B terminations, as you can see on this CAT5 jack. CAT3 jacks are generally unmarked or may be marked with the standard schemes. Pinouts, however, are not what you expect. It really doesn't make sense sometimes to memorize all the pinouts because you have to follow the codes on the jacks themselves because things happen inside those jacks. Jacks designed for performance higher than Category 5 will typically have twists inside the jacks done on the wiring frame in the jack. You can see three of the pairs inside this jack actually have internal twists. That means that the pinout on the jack and the punch down on the back of the jack don't correspond to the standard T568A or T568B color codes. So it's really not worth learning the color codes. You really have to follow what's on the back of the jack in order to get it correct. And not every manufacturer does it quite the same way. Jacks are terminated typically with a 110 punch down tool, although some manufacturers have special snap-on crimp tools of their own. Most manufacturers also offer a holder so you can hand hold the jack while you punch do the punch downs. You make sure that the color codes 
of the UTP cable match the wiring scheme on the jack, not the standard T568A or B, so that the pinout will be correct on the jack itself. Don't mix them up. Follow the color codes on the jack. Touchdown blocks use a different color code for the wires than do the jacks. You terminate the jacks with, a, with the pair order 1, 2, 3, and 4. Blue, orange, green, brown with a striped wire tip put in before the solid wire the ring. So it's blue stripe, blue, orange stripe, orange, green stripe, green, brown stripe, brown. Don't mix the color codes up with jacks. They're not the same. If you do that, you'll end up with split pairs in your wire map. 110 block has a connecting block on top of a base. So what you do is you punch down one cable on the base block, attach the connecting block, and punch the second cable down on top of the connecting block. The connecting block has the insulation displacement contacts internally and does the actual connections. Remember to match the color codes like we said. The 66 block is different than the 110 block. There are four rows of insulation displacement contacts and the two rows on each side are interconnected but with no connection between the two. So what happens is one wire is brought in and punched down on the first row of contacts near the plastic sides on each side and then the two rows in the middle are used for interconnection. Again the pair order is different than the jacks. It's blue, orange, green, brown, stripe before solid. Don't mix the color codes up or you'll end up with split pairs. Once you punch down the wires on either side of the 66 block, you have to interconnect them. You can do it with bridging clips if you're going from four pair to four pair cables, like we show here, or you've punched down pairs from a large pair count cable in the right order, or you can use bridging wires to connect them randomly as needed. The one essential tool for installers doing punch downs is called a spudger. It's a simple little pin shaped tool with a wire hook on one end. It can be used to start the wires in the punch down or pull off the wires from contacts after they've been punched down. They typically only cost a dollar a piece, so it's the one essential tool for everybody. One thing that most installers don't do is terminate with plugs. They buy patch cords. The reason is it's actually the most difficult termination process with unshielded twisted pair. If you have to do it, you strip the jacket back, then you untwist the pairs and arrange them according to the color codes for the, um, for the plug. Then holding them flat, you cut them all off at the right length, slide them fully into plug, and then crimp it. And before you crimp it, you always check to make sure you got the color codes correct because it's real easy to get them out of order during the process of inserting them into the plug. You want to cut all the wires at one time to make sure that you get all of them the correct length and they're all even. So you make sure that all will be connected with the insulation displacement contacts that are inside the plug. After you make cable up using your own plugs, make sure you test each and every one of them because it's awfully easy to make mistakes. Verifying UTP cable performance can use one of three or perhaps even four tools. The wire mapper shown in the gray photo at the top 
Make sure that all the connections are correct. Either a cable certifier or a time domain reflectometer will measure length. Then the cable certifier measures attenuation, crosstalk, propagation delay and delay skew, return loss, and other esoteric functions of the high performance cables. The tool down at the bottom is called a toner and it's used to locate a single pair in a multi-pair cable. We'll cover more on UTP cable testing in Lecture 7, our next lecture. For more information on UTP termination, go to the FOA website, www.thefoa.org, for the online reference guide, or check here on our YouTube channel for several different videos that go into detail on how to terminate plugs, jacks, and punch down blocks.